Hey guys, the OKest Gamer here, back with another 1x Player 2 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at replacing your thermal paste. If you've already watched one of my teardowns, feel free to skip ahead to the repaste portion of the video. On the prototype, it was very, very challenging to get this open. There was some issues with the side rail screws here. Uh, they were extremely tight and I actually had to drill out a couple of them because they were spinning in place. Uh, I don't think that's going to be an issue for most because uh, there have been other people that have taken this apart and not said anything about that. Uh, so it could be specific to my prototype. Okay, anyway, let's, let's go into it. So there's six screws on the back you're gonna wanna remove. I've already removed them for this video, but uh, there's one here, here, basically just evenly along the back. Just don't forget this one that's under the kickstand. It will be under a warranty sticker, so you'll need to remove that to get in. There is four on each rail, so there's basically evenly spread across. Under this sticker, you're gonna to need to remove this, and don't lose the sticker, it's very important to keep because this prevents the pogo pins on the controller from getting stuck. So I'm just gonna show you that you can just lift it. I'm gonna leave it in there for now. I did remove the screw under there, so uh, you'll want to remove that, put it aside safely. When you reassemble, make sure to put it back. Same thing on the other side, there's a little sticker here. You'll wanna lift that, keep it safe, put it back when you're done, and then remove the four screws. So you've got six screws on the back. You've got four on each side. Then for the top and bottom plates, they're actually, it looks a little more rough taking it apart than it really is. You just need to maybe catch a nail here. You can use a pick if you want, but just lift it up and just very slowly go along. Don't overly do it. It sometimes helps to pick here, pick here, kind of alternate sides and you'll be able to get it out without any damage. And sometimes I like to pop the other side as well, just to make sure that we're not getting any extra resistance. So take care of these last two. And the plastic's quite, uh, quite flexible, so it looks like I'm reefing on it, but I'm really not. So once you take the bottom, the bottom one off, there's going to be two screws. There's one here and one here. This also was another screw that I had to drill out because it was spinning. So I do need to replace that. So you'll want to take this one out. That will happen because of the magnets. So it's kind of handy if you don't want to lose it, if you accidentally drop it. And I've already taken that one out, so we're not going to bother with that. For the top, very similar process to the bottom. Just want to catch a nail here. Same thing on the other side. Now that they're both lifted, just go along slowly. If you want to help it out, you can use a pick and just, just gently go along the edge. Um, these do come out super easy, so I'm just going to do this back and forth. So one there, one there, they kind of crisscross. This one's a little bit tighter here. Okay. okay, now that we've got that off, we'll put that aside. You're gonna see this little button cluster here. So you're just gonna lift that up and put it aside. It just lays on some pins, or posts I'll call them. And there's one screw here and one screw here. Um, okay, now that we've got all these screws off, you're going to wanna to lift the back off. Now, when I'm lifting it off, it looks like it comes out very easily. That is because of the work I had to do off camera. Um, it is a bit of a struggle. There's no ribbon cables on the inside here, so you don't have to worry about that. So you can just set that aside. And then you're in the device. So I already unplugged the battery, but there's normally a clip right here. It's just a little metal clip that has this little screw that is right here. So I've already taken that out. 
So don't mind me, I did put it aside and I just misplaced it for a second. First thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna unplug the battery. So there's a little, it's, it's basically a press down ribbon cable. So I've already popped it up, but what you wanna do is come around here and just kinda clip it just gently and then make sure that it's lifted up and not making contact. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is take off the pan. There's just three screws. There's two different sizes. So these, these two over here are a little bit longer. And then a shorter one over here. Just like that. I'm not sure if you can see that. So the shorter one would just come over here where there's a little bit less plastic to go through. Next thing we're gonna need to do is lift up the tape. You could leave it fixed to the metal vents here and just take it off the fan like this. Just lift it up there. Now this is loose. So I'm going to, I'm not gonna bother unplugging it under there. I'm just gonna put it to the side. All right, the next thing is we're gonna need to take off this one screw for the speaker. We'll lift the speaker out. go we'll just put this over here so this board over here this is what connects to the two rails for the controllers and then I believe this goes to the main board so we're gonna go ahead and unplug those all right so there's two screws to remove this little board here so we'll put those aside And we'll also remove this board and put that aside. All right, next we can remove this plate. There are, I believe, three screws holding it down. There's one on the left here. So right here. Sometimes these screws don't want to lift up, so it's fine. Just loosen them. It'll come up with the plate. See, this one didn't want to lift out. There's a second one on the right side here. Same thing, it does not want to lift up, so we're gonna lift it with the plate. And there's a third one hidden in the corner here. I'm not sure if you can see that. So we're just gonna unscrew that. And it looks like this one's gonna come out. Nope, never mind. All right, so we should be able to lift the plate. So just be careful, these edges can be a little bit sharp. Um, not so much for cutting your finger, but just in case there's any ribbon cables or wires, there are some wires over here. All right, so we'll set this aside. Screws are still in it, so I'm just gonna leave them there. Okay, now we have access to the SSD, and also here's the heat sink. All right, for doing a repaste, it's a very easy access if you have it opened up. I'm gonna be replacing the current paste that came with it with some Thermo Grizzly. So to open up the heat sink, it's just three screws. So we're just gonna remove those. So once you've got these removed, it should just lift up. So let's just make sure there's nothing else. All right, so you've got our three, three screws out. So we're just gonna gently pull this up. Just wanna see if I'm missing anything. No, that should be it, so there we go. So this is the paste that it comes with. There's a little bit over here and some over here. Um, it looks like it was mostly making contact, but we're gonna put some new one on just to be safe. So what you're gonna wanna do for cleaning this, you can always look up some videos on YouTube on how to properly uh, clean these up and how to repaste, uh, but it's fairly simple. 
So I'm going to be cleaning it with some isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. .9%. So what you're going to want to do is you can use some Q-tips and you're going to want to get some, some alcohol. I'm just going to use the lid and then I can clean it up before I close it. So I just put some in here and we're going to first clean the heat sink here. So you just want to get here, get it a little bit wet. So once you finish cleaning this, I'm not going to make you guys watch me do the whole thing. Is you're going to take some here and you're just, you're not going to want to be too excessive, just enough where you're not, you know, you don't want to douse this with alcohol, but just do enough so you can get here and just wipe it, clean it, and just make sure there's no more thermal paste. Okay, so now I've cleaned these up. So I've got the heat sink nice and clean here, as well as the uh, chip here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to apply the thermal paste. So you don't need much. And where did I put the thermal paste right here? You don't need much. Um, what I like to do is I like to do an X pattern. Some people just do a little dot in the middle. Uh, it's really up to you. You can just do some Googling and see which uh, which type you'd like. You don't need much. Now that we've got that on there, you want to just inspect your pads. Uh, sometimes these will get stuck to whatever you're lifting out. So you just want to make sure that if you're missing a little piece like I am there, that uh, as you can see, it's, it's attached over here. Uh, it looks like this one is missing a little bit. So I'm going to add a fresh pad. Once you've got the film off, Need to put it on the pad just to make sure we're not missing any of the surface. All right, so we can go ahead and put our heat sink back on. So you don't want to move it around. You want to just kind of put it as flat down as possible. So we're going to see if we can do that. Or we can just line it up where it's supposed to go and then secure it back down. So I'm moving it around, but I'm not actually touching it yet, so. All right, so we got that lined up. You wanna take your screws and you wanna start tightening it evenly. So do a little bit here here and a little bit on the third one now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten a little bit more tighten a little bit more and just keep rotating until we've got them tight we want to make sure that we're pushing it down evenly so that the thermal paste is spread evenly. And with the X pattern, it should spread pretty, pretty well across the board. All right, so that's how you would repaste your 1X player 2. So we're gonna go ahead and put this down. One thing, just, uh, just like I had warned in the beginning, uh, you got to watch out for the edges of this thing. They are a little bit sharp. Not a cutting yourself hazard, but if you hit the hit one of the 
ribbon cables in the wrong way. And another thing to note is uh, while you're doing this, before you put anything down, just make sure that all the cables that you need at the top are out. All right, let's see how this fits with the heatsink. Seems to fit fine. And we're gonna take our speaker. There's a little track over here you can put it in. We're gonna place that back in. I'll put this wire on the other side of that pole. And we can start to secure things. So first we'll start with putting the shield back down. So there should be three screws. I believe I left them in here. There we go. And one thing I'll note is in a different device uh, that I had done something similar, I, I noticed that some of the poles that these are, or the posts that these are going down to are a little bit can be a little bit frail so don't over tighten just make sure you're just doing enough to hold it down but nothing more all right and there's our one speaker for our sorry our one screw for our speaker over here and then there is one last screw i have here um, but again i need to locate where i put the uh the thing for the battery here um it's not necessary, but it's just a safety precaution to make sure that the battery doesn't come out. Uh, so this one screw, I'm going to put aside for now. Okay, so we can go ahead and put our controller board down. Put our two screws in. All right, so now that we've got that in, we can put the battery back on. So it's just a press down connection. So I like to use one of these plastic picks. So once you have that in, the next thing you're going to want to do is, I haven't located where I put it, but there is a little metal clip here that will lay across here. And it's just, it'll lay across the plastic right to this other little post here. And what it does is it just prevents the battery from, uh, cable from popping up just in case. Uh, so it's just a precaution. Uh, I'm going to leave it for now uh, for the sake of this video. And I'll put it in once I figure out where I put it down. All right, so we're gonna put this in. Just put it underneath the tape here. Make sure it's lined up. All right, so we're gonna put our three screws back in. So the longer ones are gonna come on the bottom here. All right, so assuming you had this uh, here, you'd be now, you'd have everything back together. We'd just put the tape down. Just make sure that it's making contact across. And then it just folds around like that. And there you have it. Now you have your device uh, put back together, at least internally. Unfortunately, I couldn't include the rear case in the reassembly due to the screws that are missing from being drilled out. However, you can check out the beginning of the teardown process and just follow the steps in reverse order. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out my other teardown videos as well as the SSD replacement.